Hi. Astrolab from Arturia is the standalone version of its virtual instruments. Meaning, it's not just a MIDI controller, rather, you can run presets from almost all of Arturia's instruments directly on it, Without a computer or audio interface connected, everything is inside. It's bitambral, meaning you can run two different instruments or synths in a split or layer. And it supports multiple forms of synthesis, including samples, subtractive, FM, granular, physical modeling of pianos, and more. It has relatively few onboard controls, but since it's compatible with most of Arturia's software synths, if you have a license to them, including pigments, you can edit presets on your computer and transfer them over to the synth quite easily. In this video, I'll take an in-depth look at how it works and feels, along with pros and cons compared to the competition. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Arturia sent me Astrolab. Other than that, no money changed hands. They have no say over the content of this video and don't get to see it before it's published. Okay, let's start with an overview. Probably the thing that differentiates Astrolab most from the competition is the sheer number of different instrument engines that are built in under the hood. What I'm scrolling through here isn't just a list of patches that sound like a certain instrument, each of the items on this list has an entire synth or instrument engine behind the scenes. These have been built over Arturia's over 20 year history, and each of these attempts to model every knob, detail, or feature of that instrument, and often enhances it with even more capabilities. You know, this stands in contrast to how relatively minimalist its controls are. You don't have access to every knob, transistor, button, or feature of that synth. Rather, you just have access to the presets and basic timbral controls for these presets. Beside the single presets, you also have quite a few multis or bitambral presets, either splits or layers. This is in contrast to many other stage keyboards or workstations that use a smaller number of engines to create the sounds in their palette, typically based on samples, FM, and virtual analog, and typically using a similar interface for all of those instruments. Now, having a more limited number of engines than all these isn't necessarily a bad thing. The benefit of having a unified interface on other instruments is that you'll typically get all the controls to edit their sound on the panel or screen, and you don't have an additional learning curve for each instrument if you're the type of person that likes to come up with their own sounds. If you just wanna play presets and have minimal tweakability, not that there's anything wrong with that. The controls on Astrolab are fine. That's because with Astrolab, Arturia has taken a different approach than most workstations. All of the complexity lives under the hood, and instead you get thousands of presets and a relatively small number of simple controls on the panel for sound design macros and for effect control knobs with some shift functions. If you want to edit any aspect of these sounds beyond just the four macros and effects, you'll need to sync with a computer and have a license to pigments, V collection, or any other individual synth, in which case you'll see this little button, you can click open, and then you'll be able to see and change and edit every single parameter you want within these synths and then sync back into Astrolab. So that's what the pigments interface looks like. Let's say go for the Prophet 5. So this is the interface you'll see if you don't have the additional license to the Prophet 5 emulator. And if you own this license, whether through V collection or individually, you'll be able to tweak every knob and button. In terms of synth engines, you've got subtractive, vector synthesis, you name it, FM, physical models, of electric pianos and regular pianos, a vocoder you can use with the audio input, and then Pigments on its own has pretty much every form of synthesis you can imagine, including additive and granular. By the way, many of these engines also have built-in sequencers. So this can be anything from simple arpeggiated patterns to more complex and elaborate sequences. Let's maybe try a few more. Now again, you'll need the software license to edit these in detail, but you can still mess around with the macro knobs to explore the parameters the preset exposes on the panel. Moving on, as you could hear, Astrolab is bitambral, which means it supports splits. 
I know I'm not playing this well, but the only benefit to have practiced this would have been a copyright strike. You could also layer sounds. When you layer sounds, the LEDs and knobs are blue. And when you create splits, hopefully with the lighting you can see this, one part turns orange or yellow and the other green. And then the macros can control both timbres or the green timbre and the orange timbre separately. Moving on with the overview, beyond the synth engines, you've got four effects, two insert effects, and two send effects. The insert effects can be applied separately for each timbre if you like, and the send effects are global to both timbres. And you can see the colors match accordingly. So if I assign this effect to part two, it'll turn green. Astrolab also has an arpeggiator chord modes, scale modes, and also a simple MIDI looper that lets you record phrases live and then play them back. Astrolab also supports somewhat smooth transitions between presets. So say if I play this and hold it and swap a preset, it'll keep ringing until I play another note from the next preset. This can be pretty useful because it may take a while for some presets to load up. You'll notice, by the way, that when a preset's ready, it'll sort of zoom in. So that one came up pretty quickly. The physical modeling or synth ones load up pretty fast. But those with samples may take a few seconds. In this case, it certainly comes in handy that the sound still rings out until the heavy sample based presets load up. Once the graphic zooms in, you can play them. Polyphony typically varies between 8 to 48 voices per part, depending on the instrument, except for the easel and synthy. These can only play one voice per part. Moving on with the overview, let's talk about the key bed. It feels pretty good, I think. It's a bit too sensitive. I actually changed the sensitivity to the heaviest setting. Maybe it's just how I play, but I felt that it gets to full velocity relatively quickly. The keys look like piano keys, but they're semi-weighted, not fully weighted. The key bed has channel aftertouch or mono aftertouch. It's pretty sensitive. There's maybe about one millimeter of travel. Maybe a bit more on the white keys and less on the black keys. Mono aftertouch means that if you play a chord and apply pressure to one key, then it will impact all the notes, regardless of which note it is that you apply pressure to. Then alongside the key bed, in terms of build, overall everything here does feel quite premium. The enclosure is metal except the sides, which aren't wood, but feel like it. It's a polymer called Bakelite, if you're interested. Astrolab weighs 10 kilos or 22 pounds. The knobs are very firm. Endless encoders with LED rings, which is great. LEDs are multicolor, which helps figuring out what it is you're doing or where you are, whether it's playlists or sound categories. In terms of storage, the internal drive has 22 gigabytes of which only seven are used. So there's plenty of free space, even for sample based instruments. The buttons are solid, a bit clicky for my taste. And then there's the large screen encoder, which is a combo round color LCD screen and silver encoder ring around the screen. And then the whole thing acts as a push encoder. It doesn't matter where you push it. It's not directional, so you can push on this side or on this side. When you do press it, the whole thing tilts toward the direction that you apply pressure to. I did notice that you can accidentally change the item that you wanna select as you press, if you move the encoder a bit as you press it. Now I did that intentionally, but you can sometimes do it accidentally. So make sure you press down and not down into the side. I asked Arturia about this and they mentioned they would try and tweak it to improve it in a future firmware update. The metal ring is smooth and gives you haptic feedback with little clicks you might hear as you scroll through menu items. And it feels most natural to turn it with two fingers, but in this video, I'll try to remember to turn it with a single finger so I don't block the screen. This encoder also has a long press or shift press function. So if I tweak a preset and wanna save it, you long press or shift press 
and then you have a few options to save the preset or add it to a playlist. There are a few ways to browse through presets, as you've seen here, by preset type, instrument artist, liked presets, sound banks, and playlists. You can also quickly choose categories using these buttons. And if you long press an instrument type, then you'll see a few subtypes up here. Beside these factory shortcuts, you can also create playlists with quick shortcuts to patches and songs. So these are sort of lists of playlists that can live within a particular playlist and then you can have multiple playlists on board. In terms of connectivity, Astrolab has MIDI in and out, four quarter inch pedal inputs for sustain, expression, and auxiliary pedals. These are assignable in the menu here or in Analog Lab. You've got two XLR combo inputs that can be used for processing audio using the vocoder instrument, as well as some of the other synths, along with a retractable gain knob, two quarter inch balanced outputs, which is great, and a headphone jack and then a USB type A jack to connect to storage or MIDI controllers. So if you really want more knobs, you can add them by putting a MIDI controller here. You've also got a USB type C jack to connect to a computer, tablet, or phone. This is for data transfer, not audio. So you can't use Astrolab as an audio interface for your computer. Astrolab also has wireless connectivity, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Bluetooth is just for audio, not MIDI controllers. So you can connect a phone to this and listen to the phone's audio through the outputs, through the speakers you've got connected or headphone. And then Wi-Fi connectivity to connect to your phone. And I'm told in a future firmware update also to Analog Lab on a computer. Astro Lab can connect to an external Wi-Fi network or create its own network if you're in a venue somewhere so that you can connect to it wirelessly directly. Speaking of these apps, there are apps for iOS and Android. These let you browse through presets by type and instrument, like presets and add presets to playlists. They're in sync, so if you swap presets on the phone, you'll see it on the synth itself. They can also do things that Astrolab can't directly, like download free and paid sound packs from Arturia's store. You can also name playlists and songs using the app. It would be nice if they added the ability to rename presets as well here, because renaming songs or playlists here can be quite tedious. And then to complete the overview, you can also sync up with the Analog Lab software. Presets are mirrored. And the Analog Lab software isn't just a screen for Astrolab. It also has the synth engines built in, so you can load it as a plugin within your DAW, hop between tracks that have different instances of Analog Lab, and the controls here will change accordingly. The parameters are also in sync, so if you turn a knob on Astrolab, it'll turn on Analog Lab, and vice versa. The two stay in sync, more on this later. Okay, let's dive in a little bit deeper and start with the macros. When you use Astrolab standalone without a computer connected, you've got access to four sound design parameters on the panel. These are called macros because they can control one or more internal patch parameters at a time, and they may or may not be related to what's written on the panel. Typically, brightness will add high frequency content to a patch. Timbre will change the timbre. It can be resonance on a filter or something else, as you can hear here. Time typically controls the envelopes. And movement can control an LFO or rhythm or some other form of modulation in the patch. I already mentioned the knobs are endless encoders. And when they're blue, they're controlling both patches in a layer in this case, not a split. And you can have them control individual parts as well. In which case, like I mentioned earlier, they'll turn to yellowish orange for part one and green for part two. You've got a certain degree of control over what these do, even if you don't have license to the synths from within Analog Lab, for example, controlling the curves or the parameter range. You do this in the settings in the Macros tab. Moving right on down from the timbre controls to the effects, like I mentioned, you've got four effects, two insert effects. If you've got just one timbre going on in a preset, then these will be blue. You can bypass them entirely if you want and select the effect with a long press where you've got a choice of a host 
of insert effects. So for example, if I wanted to filter this piano, I could. Each effect has a few presets. So for example, a low cut preset, resonant, retro, or you can just edit the parameters using the encoder. So in this case, cutoff and resonance. which we'll hear better if we sleep the filter. Besides dry wet control on the panel, one of these parameters can be controlled with shift. So if I hold shift and turn the knob, you'll see in this case I'm controlling cutoff directly. Anyway, that's the filter effect. There's parametric EQ, a compressor, distortion, with a few types. And then here too, you get access to one additional parameter using shift, in this case, drive. So that's drive, then there's chorus. A few presets here. And detailed controls, flanger, phaser, stereo panner, analog phaser, wah amp and rotary speaker. The second insert effect is identical, long press, same options. So you can choose two different effects or apply each to two different parts. Let's bypass these. Then you've got delay and reverb. Here you've got delay level and time with shift. And then a long press exposes additional parameters, same deal, presets, and then detailed parameters, delay time, ready sync feedback. And then filtering, which is always important for delays. If you've got two parts going on, there are no send controls here, just the level of the effect, but you can control sends within Analog Lab. And then there's a reverb, so dry, louder. And then there are quite a few reverb types in here. And once you choose one, you've got presets as well as a few options. Room size. And in this case, pre-delay is the parameter you can control only through here. And then room size is the shift parameter. If you've got Analog Lab connected, of course, it'll sync up. You can choose effects through here as well. And you get a nice visual representation of the effects. Then after the effects, you've got a master EQ with bass, mid, and treble controls. You access that with the shift key. So for example, if I wanted more bass, you could hear that, or more highs, or mids. This is a master EQ, so if you're in bitambral mode, it will impact both timbres. If you want EQ for a particular timbre, apply one of these insert parametric effects to it. Let's move on and talk about a few other features. You've got a basic arpeggiator, which you can long press to edit. There's a hold function either here or just a uh, shift function here. So that'll hold that. You've got, let's get this going faster. Multiple rates, octave ranges, types, and you can also have the arpeggiator applied to just one of the parts. You've also got a chord mode, which you can customize just by holding the chord button and playing a different chord. Let's say this. Or if you don't want to create a custom chord, use one of the factory ones. 
And then beside a chord mode, you've got a scale mode, which you activate with shift scale, and then you can choose any one of a number of scales. The LEDs will light up to show you the scale, and any notes you play out of a scale will snap to the scale. So this is a fun and useful way to learn scales. Let's move on and talk about the MIDI looper or MIDI recorder. It has two modes, either loop mode, in which case you can determine a loop length, and you'll probably want a metronome for that, and maybe lower it quite a bit. Let's turn it on. Let's make a quick recording. And if I really liked this masterpiece, I could save it or load up one of the previously saved songs. I think you can store over a hundred songs here. This is a factory one. You could of course tweak parameters as the song is playing. There are no overdubs though, it's just a simple recorder. And you can also record parameter tweaks. Loops are only up to, I think, 32 bars. But if you just want to record a song and not a loop, then I think you can go for up to 30 minutes. And then as far as splits and layers go, it's really simple to add a part. You can search again by type, instruments, sound banks. Let's say go for uh, CMI and... Let's go with that, why not? So right now these are playing in parallel, which can be noisy, but creating a split is super easy. Either create a split point like this, or go into detail with shift and MIDI, and you can use these to create overlaps and control a few other MIDI parameters, as well as transpose the different splits. You can also disconnect various controls from the split. So say if you want a sustain pedal to impact only one split or aftertouch to work on only one split, then you've got those controls. And if you want to assign an effect to a part, just press the part and choose the effect. So that's what you need to know about using Astrolab standalone. I already showed you how you can use the phone app to browse and manage presets. Let's take a closer look at what you can do when you sync Astrolab with Analog Lab. You'll want to make sure this little button is pressed. I'm using Analog Lab standalone now, but you can also drop it on tracks in your DAW and use multiple instances as plugins. Analog Lab has three main views. This is the stage view, very simple, and has different images as you swap different presets. So this is sort of like a uh, performance mode. Then it's got a library view, which you use to filter presets. And there are a few sub views for that. And then you have a studio view with which you edit a particular preset. I already showed you the effects controls here, how you can swap them in and out and how this is mirrored nicely as well. Then you could add instruments to parts here. And also, if you own the plugin, jump in, edit the parameters, and then jump back out. One thing I noticed, and I don't know if this is just because I'm on the beta, is that not all the presets in Analog Lab are loaded up in here. So for example, the easel has, I think, like three presets. Anyway, if you download additional presets on your computer, or find or create any you like, then you can drag and drop them onto Astrolab. So for example, now I'm browsing Astrolab's library, if I go into my own library and then show sounds by instrument, go into easel, see more, you'll see there are quite a few of these here. I can just press one. It automatically loads up here. Pretty nice. I'll save this one. And now I've got that here on Astrolab. You can also drag and drop presets onto playlists if you like. One thing I noticed is that while these parameters do sync up between Astrolab and Analog Lab, if I go in and edit the preset, if I have the license to Buchla Easel, which in this case I do, then the changes that I make here within the synth don't impact the sound unless I save the preset and then sync that back here. I hope they sync that too. If they don't, don't forget that Analog Lab makes sounds too. So as you're editing the presets, don't listen to them on Astrolab. 
listen to them on your computer through the plugin. Now, while you can't access this instance of a plugin if you don't have the license for it, you can get a bit sneaky if you open up the settings, go into MIDI, and move from generic nine knobs to generic nine knobs plus nine faders, then even if you don't have a license to, in this case, Bukla Easel, you can still control these parameters through here. And these will automatically sync up as you have heard, and you can then immediately save that over here. So that's one way to unlock nine additional parameters that you can't access through the panel. One thing though, if you add another instrument, let's uh, just pick this and add it then these parameters now change. You're no longer editing the specific timbre, rather you're editing nine different parameters, some of which you also can't access on the panel, like the delay and reverb sends for the individual parts. If you want to go back to editing the per part presets, just press here and you've got them back. Let's explore the macros a little bit more. I've loaded up a different preset. So let's say, for example, I felt that for this macro, I didn't want the filter to open up this much. I could very easily edit its range. So now it won't open up quite as much. Like I mentioned earlier, you can see which parameters each macro edits just by pressing it. And if you owned a license to the instrument plugin, as opposed to Analog Lab Pro, then you could add parameters here, say for example, if I wanted to control pulse width with this macro as well, or resonance. Again, this requires a license to this plugin, the Prophet 5 in this case. And then one more important thing to mention before we head out to the pros and cons, currently plugins from V Collection X aren't supported on Astrolab. So this includes Acid, the 303, or Mini Freak V, Arturia has said these will be coming, so it'll be cool when it does. And then one instrument which isn't supported and isn't coming is the Mellotron. However, if we go back home here and look for the sampler instrument, you'll see a few samples in here, but quite a few samples that sound suspiciously like a Mellotron, for example, I think this one as well. And then maybe also say strings. So you kind of have a Mellotron here. And one more interesting point, if we look on screen, you'll see these are called SFZ engine sounds. SFZ is an open format for multi-samples, but currently you can't import in your own. It would be nice to see this evolve into an instrument that lets you load up user multi-samples and gives you some basic controls over them. Okay, let's talk about pros and cons for Astrolab. On the pros side, if you need a portable standalone keyboard-based instrument with the largest timbral range possible, I think there's nothing that comes close. Even if Astrolab only had the pigments engine, there you are, then it would be an industry leading standalone synth. And add to that the dozens of engines that Arturia have created over the years. And you've got quite a formidable instrument at a very reasonable price. Add to that the optional ability to customize its sounds even further, whether it's using the bundled Analog Lab software, or if you own the synth, which is a separate purchase, the ability to really dive in and customize anything you want, then you can probably create any sound you can imagine in here. That said, there are some cons. First, there are the very minimalist sound design controls here. Having only four macro knobs doesn't give you much to play with. And yes, the hidden ones I showed you earlier add a bit. But if you really want to dive in, having to go to a computer, even if you do have these extra licenses, and then bring the presets back in is an extra step. Of course, if you don't have your computer with you, which is the point, all you've got is these four parameters, plus potentially the effect parameters or any additional parameters you want to MIDI map to. Beside that, another important competitor you need to consider, even if you've got to have all of Arturia's sounds, is a computer with an audio interface and a copy of Arturia's own Analog Lab Pro. That along with a MIDI controller, whether the ones from Arturia, which typically have direct integrations with Analog Lab, or MIDI controllers from other companies, gives you the same exact sounds and synths at a much lower cost, assuming you already own the computer and interface. Then of course, there are plenty of competitors making keyboards with a broad range of sounds, even if they don't have so many dedicated synth engines. These include the Modi X from Yamaha, MPC Key 61 or 37, Roland's Phantom, 
Waldorf's Iridium, and various keyboards from Korg and Nord. Depending on which one of these you pick, they may have more simultaneous timbres, more hands-on controls, better sequencers or arpeggiators, and sampling and chopping capabilities on the instrument itself. Then beside the competition, there are a few firmware cons, meaning things that hopefully will be fixed in firmware updates. I already mentioned you need to be pretty careful when you press the screen encoder so that you don't accidentally jump a parameter up or down. I'd also love to have better sync with Analog Lab so that when you change synth parameters, when you dive into the synth plugins themselves, those changes are reflected immediately on the hardware. I've seen a few bugs here and there, but I'm assuming that's because I was just using the beta. And it would be great to be able to rename presets on the phone app because renaming them using the screen encoder is a bit tedious. So that's it for Astrolab, one of the most timbrely diverse synth I've ever seen. If you liked the insights in this video, there are plenty more in my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.